<laughs> Hello to anyone watching. Today we will be designing a frog. Let's get into it. So I've been designing a lot of insects recently and they're, they're, they're starting to outnumber me. So I thought that today's challenge would be something to help keep them in line. So here is today's design. We are going to be doing a frog. As you can see, your concept sketches do not have to be a masterpiece. Gather some basic materials. We've got pens, pencils, and that sort of thing. And the first step we're gonna really do is the diagramming. So what we do is like anybody who has ever had to draw anything or done any of those drawing tutorials, what you do is you break down your shape into, break down your character into basic shapes. Sort of from there, what you do is you look at sort of the lines of symmetry and you work out where your starting points will be and how you're going to approach it. There we go. So at this point, my plan was to do a like the head as a sort of a separate piece and work on like maybe some inset eyes, like I had done with my my praying mantis previously. Now uh, <laughs> things don't always go to plan, so we'll find that out in a minute. Uh, so here we go. So I've just outlined it all in black for you, so you can have a look. And here I am drawing the lines of symmetry. So that really helps I find with with sculpting the shape. It helps me sort of work out where I need to put my increases, my decreases, my post stitches. And also it helps determine the starting point. Uh, the, the easiest place to start will usually be sort of a very symmetrical angle. Um, and we throw in some rough dimensions at this point as well, just so that we can sort of work out roughly what it is we're trying to make and how big it should end up, because I think we've all had a giant rainbow llama in our past. There we go. So we're starting at the base of the frog because not only is it closed, but you can see there through the um, vertical line of symmetry I think it is like from the top down you can see that it is the same all the way around it's, it's it's symmetrical so you only need to really watch that sort of horizontal that flat plane line of symmetry when when sculpting and working as sort of where your stitches need to go now uh, well let's see the front arm is a tube uh, <laughs> if you it, it's a tube guys but it's a tube that I know I want to be roughly four or five centimeters tall to go with the 10 centimeter frog. Now with the head, uh, as I said before, I was going to sort of try and get an inset. Um, and basically that requires it to be made in two pieces and then the head itself is a separate piece which we would then attach to the opening in the neck. So yeah, I'm just drawing a, I'm drawing a little sketch there on how I would approach that. Okay, so the back leg, even though it looks really twisty and turny and it does have that S bend, is actually also a tube. Um, it's a tube with a few extra steps, but basically it means that we would also still start at the, the, the thigh or the shoulder, um, hip, the, the, the thigh, shoulder, the hip, um, and, and work our way down from there. Okay, so go stash shopping, get some yarn, get your eyes. <laughs> uh, and here I am. Picking a hook, trying to find the one that I never ever put away because I'm always, always using, which means that I can never find it. Okay, you'll have to forgive me here, I am Australian, so to me this is the right way up. So what that actually says is a 3.5mm hook. And what I am showing here is that the yarn recommends a 4mm hook. Just grabbing a couple of eyes, I think these ones here were 21mm. I decided to start with the head. Now I recommend you always start with the head because then if you're anything like me and you go to put down a project to start the next shiny thing, you like it'll judge you. It'll judge you until you finish it. Now I tried to make this head four separate times. It failed. But what I decided to do is go back to the concept sketch and notice that the, the eyes are really the only bit that needs to stand out very far from the from the, the head. And so I went back and I, re, I redesigned and just did the eyes as separate pieces and decided to do the head as part of the body as well. This frog was frogged more, more often than any frog has ever been frogged. But we got there. We got there in the end. and he can watch comfortably from the comfort of the top of the screen. Alrighty, so next up I decided to do the legs because I do think the back legs were going to be the next big sort of challenge of this. They're really the only sort of non-standard kind of shape in this, in this particular design because uh, it does require that S-bend which does require 
uh, basically increasing on the inside and decreasing on the outside to get that air spin. But if you don't do it evenly, you end up with all kinds of wrinkles and weird things. So, okay, so yeah, I knew, I knew roughly what size I wanted this leg to be. Uh, I, sometimes I, I measure in centimeters and sometimes I measure in stitches just to keep everything in proportion. Uh, in, in this case, I was using stitches as an indication. I wanted the, the widest part of the leg to be 12 stitches around. So knowing that, I knew that I just needed to work up in sixes. And we are nearly ready. Counting to six like a champion. And we're off. Okay, so I had to test that it was a working frog leg. It has its three toes now, uh, and yep, it works. So uh, from there, we definitely needed another one. So I just thought I'd save us a little, there we go, a little crochet magic. All right, now let's see if they work as a pair, and fantastic, they do. Okay, moving on. All righty, so I, was, I ended up with a lot of different pieces at that point, and so I wanted to go back and work on the body shape now, which also turned into the body and the head at this junction. So. I, so basically I like to do it that way so that I can attach all the pieces to something and not risk losing them. I, I it, yeah, I, I work in a fairly chaotic way and uh, if I can attach all the pieces together, I'm just better off. So here we go. Let's 3D print a body. Subscribe or Artemis will get you. Alrighty, so this is the finished shape. Now I've made it look a little weird, I'll admit, but that's because I've got plans. Okay, we're gonna censor that. I'm so sorry. Okay, so yeah, back to the funny shaped head. All right, so we see how these are two little cheeks. Well, what we do is we're gonna tuck, tuck that funny shaped end bit in. And just like that, we've got a really cute kind of little inset mouth. Okay, I'm just gonna remove the stitch saver there. Uh, and we're just gonna finish that off. I just wanted to check if I was happy with it before I finished it off and committed to it. Cause you know, this frog's been frogged so many times, I didn't mind frogging it again. There we go. Oh, nom, nom. There we go. So now we will just pin the cheeks in place. Like so. So I like to secure it in a number of ways and uh, make sure you keep track of how many pins go in so you take out the same amount. So I decided for this one that I didn't like it in all green and so I made it again with a little yellow belly, which I think turned out super cute. So. Uh, we will just be popping the green one aside and we will be using the, the yellow bellied one to finish this and I'll probably finish off the green one later. So here we go. So now we are going to attach the legs. I'm never ashamed to take my time when it comes to pinning. Uh, sometimes it like honestly it takes longer than sewing it together because you just want that pose just right. You want to capture that little character. I'm sorry about that pin. <laughs> I found that pin long after I finished making this creature. Um, 
it got it kind of got stuck in the in the weave and as I went to take some photos of it afterwards it stabbed me several times uh yeah so that's why we count our pins particularly if they're presents for people unless you really don't like the people I guess um all right so here we go pinning on the second leg making sure that we have it at the sort of the right sort of upturned angle because that is what the sketch was looking for and that's what I was looking for securing them on there nice and tightly All right, pop the pop the green one aside. All right, here we go. We're gonna just attach the eyes now, like that. And see, he's already looking pretty happy to see us. So, like, we're not going too wrong. He is, however, still missing his front legs, which I left to last because they are a tube, and tubes don't take a lot of work to work out how to do them. Plus, with the finished item the way it is, and all pinned together, and already everything else assembled, it's really easy to tell exactly how long they need to be. There's no guesswork involved. If we'd started with those legs, everything else would have had to be in proportion with the easiest thing to adjust and make. Uh, so it just makes sense to do them last, really. There we go, three toes, just like the back feet. And we need two of those as well. Alrighty, and here we go. We just pin those on exactly where we want them. And there we have it. That's all of the pieces. And there we are. Okay, so there is our finished frog. Yep, hop test, he passes. He's definitely a frog. So that's him from the side. Uh, I think that he matches pretty closely. His nose isn't quite as big. Uh, from the top, he's pretty close. His eyes are a little closer together. I am worried that I made them a little bit big. Uh, it wouldn't be difficult to sort of fix it's in the next one. But I do think that the big eyes make him really cute. So then from the side, we can see again, his nose worked out a little bit smaller and his eyes worked out a little bit perkier than, than in the original concept sketch. But I'm, I think I like the, the finished item better than the sketch. Uh, you guys let me know what you think. And from the front, I think we captured that expression quite nicely. Uh, with the mouth open like that as well, it'd be really easy to customize with the tongue if you, would, if you wanted to, or sort of stick a fly in there. So there we are, that is the finished frog. All right, everybody. Uh, here he is. How did I do? I think he turned out super cute. The pattern is linked in the description for anybody who wants to have a go themselves and, and, and make a little frog. I have not named him. You guys can let me know what his name should be uh, or set me a challenge for the next one in the comments. So please hit the like button if you enjoyed this uh, and subscribe if you want to see what's next because I've got a lot of things planned. All right. Thanks and see you next time.